We'll call the meeting to order. It's six o'clock. First on the agenda, are there any changes or additions, Dan? Yes, please. Um, you could have Allison employee over the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Two Hill. Allison Two Hill. She's back there. Back and back and down the Okay. All right. Next, to approve the minutes. The minutes of September 21st, 2020. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I uh, noticed just that uh, just to make a point that Eric made earlier that as opposed to being a volunteer for that, I guess volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> you mean thrown under the bus? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I'm fine with it. <laughs> the other thing I noticed, I believe that Kevin Barrows is listed as road foreman, and he we actually appointed him as uh, highway superintendent, so that should be changed. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Motion is passed. Community concerns. Who do we have for community concerns tonight? Folks, go ahead, stand up, and please say your name. And I'm Don McDowell with my wife, Allison Seville. Hi, Allison. I'm in the city area. And I spoke to Dan earlier today about the community, and I uh, wanted to just come and talk to you about concerns about the uh, off road recreational vehicles that are posted to that area. And without um, our understanding from Dan, anyway.
Spring Farm, I know, uses that road every single day. Well, the teams used to. The Bidwell brothers don't use it every day, but they're using it quite a bit. And that's concerning when we start talking about putting these off-road vehicles on the road in that area. Simply put, we just don't need more traffic. We don't need more noise. And we're not talking about one vehicle. If you go up to Newport, you'll see they travel in, in groups, which is fine. I don't have a problem with it. I just don't need to have 10, 12 recreational vehicles passing by the house. That's what we've experienced hundreds of times in Newport area. It's just done. So uh, it's not a, not a once in a while kind of thing. And I, again, I would compare that to a wall where it just doesn't seem to be an issue. So uh, we don't need the traffic. We don't need more. We don't need the advocacy. We've got, uh, we've got enough going on out there. So just wanted to express that to you tonight. Um, I told some neighbors that I would come tonight. I certainly look forward to hearing the proposal. I know Dan says these guys are working on a particular proposal. We look forward to hearing about that at some future meeting. And I just throw one question to the board, and that is, uh, is there, has, has there been a, uh, a decision on how the community would find that about? Well, what we can do is uh, anybody that is interested for or against it, we can get your email address, and then when we have an upcoming meeting to talk about it, we can let you know, make sure you're notified. Um, I will say that we don't have any proposal or plan in front of us. We've thrown out some ideas from some of the ATV clubs. Um, there is one road right now that we're allowing access to go get gasoline on Silver Ridge Road, and it's kind of like the, you know, a test to see how well it's going, and you know, we've heard some pros and some cons. I've, I've also had quite a few phone calls in opposition of it as well. But we're not um, we're not here to to discuss it really right now. We're in, in fact now the season's over or almost over. We're probably not going to introduce anything as an ordinance or any change till next year. And I think that's what Dan's saying. You know, you can certainly get get your email to us, and we'll definitely notify you um, when we're going to talk about it again. Um, there has been some ideas thrown out there. We they've talked about a lot of different roads, but, you know, we want to do it right. So we want to, um, you know, not rush into just opening it up, you know. Um, I'm, I'm still waiting to hear back from the Newport. I actually spoke to some people in Newport about it, and um, as well as a, a landowner up there. And it is kind of weird to pull up at a at a intersection and have a four-wheeler pull up beside you. You know, I've got a guy that owns a big farm up there, 200 acre farm, and he's he's all for it. I'm, on the other side of that, I've had people against it. So, you know, we're just kind of like waiting, waiting till next season comes, and we're gonna uh, the ATV club will come to us with a real proposal in writing, and it can be discussed then. But we have no decisions so far. So, other than the Silver Ridge Road, I don't know if you guys care to comment on it or, but we appreciate your input. And um, I've been getting that input almost on a daily basis since the word kind of travels fast, you know. And, um, you know, that's just the way it is, so both for and against it. So, but I do know there's some folks from the ATV clubs here tonight, if you have any questions for them, too. Um, they are, I know one of the questions I got was, uh, you know, they're not, the vehicles aren't registered. There's no, no regulation with them, but there really is, you know. Um, there's a lot to it. But uh, like I said, we want to do it right if we do make any changes. So we're not going to rush into things and we're just going to wait and, you know, see what people have to say. And, and so far, the ATV club has been very open to, you know, what we what we want to do. So. And I'll just close by saying the, the issue isn't the ATV club. Right. Right. And that's, you know, from what we gather so far, like Silver Ridge Road, we granted access so they could come fill up with gas and, and also use the parking lot by the Sunset Motor Inn. It's like a trailhead. They park there and they go from there. But they're not like here to ride on the road, you know. The, it's more of an access. And, you know, you talk to any ATV operator, they don't want to ride on a road. You know, they want to be on a trail, you know. They want to go to Lowell and Eden and uh, Garfield or wherever, you know. I, I'm one of them. I'm a side-by-side -side owner, too. And um, we don't care about riding on the roads, really. It's just the access points going to and from and 
you know, it's an advantage to be able to go to a gas station and fill up with gas and, you know, get drinks and snacks. But, you know, we're certainly going to make, um, try to make a good decision when we do make any change. Yeah, you're welcome. Just want to make sure everybody has said one day prior to Make sure I get your, your email address because that's the best one. I think you have my email. Okay. I gave it to you this morning. Okay. Just want to make sure everybody has that day that I want to be involved in the email. And we'll, we'll post it up on Port Storm as well. And I was going to say, this will be the largest this is around. Yeah, and I'm, that's what the people reach out to me too personally. I I say get your email address to to Dan, and we'll make sure we, you know, you know about it when it's an upcoming meeting or when we're going to make a decision. So. Go ahead, Shannon. Like Paul was saying, you know, we prefer to be on the road. We know what our we know on road is not our not our thing, not our preference. You know, we propose it to the town in the year somewhere around there. Charles 
So I mean, I've always remembered that, and Charles you know, in the last 18 years that I've done this, but you know, I've had questions. I've always been able to call Charles and tell him now. So he's been in this profession a, a lot longer than me, and I respect that. So I thought it Charles is right next door and stuff, so I thought I'd have Charles here to help answer questions that you guys may have. Um, it is a change of government. I think a lot of people don't understand that. It is a different form of government. So I'm going to let you guys start with Charles with some army for that matter. And any questions that you might have. Charles, I'd like to see if I can find your Sure. Um, calm my fears about loss control from a board perspective. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's empowering, right? Uh, uh, I think uh, you find that, that, uh, you know, if you can get out of the weeds, you can see the forest, right? And uh, when you concentrate on that, so the big picture stuff, the community values and vision, where you want to head the community, you adopt the zone, you adopt the town plan, you adopt the ordinance, you fill the approved the warrant, and, uh, your point of manager, your point of board, your commission. So you shape the community in the future. But what you're essentially doing by turning over the executive power and hiring a professional manager is uh, uh, putting that person in a position to effectively carry out the policy because you want uh, authority with responsibility. And so they're in a position to carry out that day to day administration. I mean, I think you got lucky with Dan. You got someone that was retired. Uh, you know, had a pension and uh, uh, came to Morristown. Morristown is a big kind of community. You know, you're selling off this community. In the last couple of years, I live in Elmore. I've seen this growth and development. It's the hub of this area. You've got population. And uh, you need someone to attend to it. You need someone to be a resource to the department heads, the town board, and, uh, um, and take care of those administrative details and make sure that. Uh, uh, you know, the manager doesn't have to take other map, you know, or I'm going to get these bumps to the board if uh, there's a every time uh, there may be, uh, um, you know, uh, something that the manager needs to assert. You know, at the end of the day, though, um, you uh, still have control of that manager, you hire and fire them, you, uh, uh, you still remain in the body judicial board to your personnel grievances um, and to uh, uphold or deny those grievances. Um, and so, uh, but it does, uh, it does break apart to some degree uh, the legislator from the executive function. Does that give you a basic answer that helps? It does. And, and unfortunately, the only story you hear about town managers in Walter Hippon newspaper, those are the ones that are better. We don't yeah. hear the success stories. Um, it's, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I've never lived in a community that had a town manager. Right. It's always new on the select board. In this case, we have our town administrator, which has been highly successful. But you'll also find people that are not Dan fans. I mean, I, I'm sure it's still you have the same the same thing. It's not a complete 100% everybody behind that that uh, former government. I just want to make sure when the day comes, if this is the day, if this is the time that the town is ready for that step, or are we on the brink of or is it just too much for a, a five-person board to administrate, and, and is it too much for an administrator to have to wait for permission every two weeks to do that? Are we really holding up the taxpayers beneficial to go to the town manager point? A lot of questions that way. I just don't I don't know the answer to because I have no experience. Well, you're in the best position uh, to decide that as your voters if you choose to advance. I mean, this is a form of government. They, they have to decide. They have to vote on. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's nothing you have to do. It's uh, it's an option. You know, it might be kind of interesting if you just talk to uh, someone. Remember, this, I've never been a town administrator, but I've been a town manager. Um, you know, I will say, you know, Dan talked about some of the advantages, and he's talked to me about this. He got lucky with Dan, as I indicated. I do think you'll get a broader pool of applicants if you have a town manager. I think some managers are qualified and have experience. May not want to subject themselves to a town administrative system. Um, most authority is informal, it's earned through trust and demonstration and listening and uh, compassion, certainly necessary. But that's the key. When you need to assert, you need to assert, and it's good for those folks to understand uh, that uh, just like your boss at work, you know, they're in a position short of harassing or doing something illegal or unethical. Uh, that they expect to go 
got to get done. And uh, you know, people follow support policies and we work cooperate with the other. And uh, I have found myself not needing to do that, but it's a confidence builder and it's important to know that it's there when you need it. And uh, to be a threat to anyone in the workforce that's here to show up and work and do ethical uh, it helps protect the other employees and it uh, helps uh, you know, uh, helps make sure someone's on, on watch. I mean, I think he's got a half a loaf of bread with Dan. I think he's got a good person, and I'm, I'm not going to say that the town administrator system uh, isn't functional. It serves much in the same capacity as it does not formally separate uh, some executive functions, such as the see of the hiring and firing authority uh, and the evaluation of employees and uh, um, some uh, uh, purchasing agent and uh, those sorts of things it takes to administer. And you guys, I know most of you, um, you know, are very bright and dedicated people. And, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, just because you're elected doesn't mean you necessarily run a business or overseeing personnel. That's not why people elect you. They elect you uh, because you've lived here, you know, and you know the community, you know it's got you. And that's where your strength is. And we'll all work. My job is to, uh, when I come to a meeting, is to make sure you have information to make a contextual decision and that uh, you can trust uh, when uh, you make that decision that uh, I'm going to work diligently uh, to effectuate that. Um, but, you know, as I was saying, it might become interesting to talk to someone like Paco Lawrence. Uh He's the one that's pretty much why the council made to form government for so. I don't know if you know Paco. But he's the, uh, I actually, you know, he's the police chief in Bella Falls, where I grew up. I actually lived in Westminster, but, you know, Bella Falls is where the high school was, we all say Bella Falls. And he was the police chief there. I don't know if you know that. He was there on, had a pretty distinguished career with the state police. But he's seen the council manager form of work, government work in Bella Falls. And uh, he's the one that introduced it. And he might be an interesting person to talk to about why he still felt at the time. Every community is different, but the same at the same time. Dick Marin was on the board. You probably know that Dan Heidi was on the board. Uh, I think Norman Williams was on. Yeah, he came on shortly after. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's the decision they decided was right. And I will say they were skeptics. And, uh, and uh, so uh, one of them was Mark O'Leary. I don't know if you want to know Mark or the institution. So, you know, I knew the day she walked in the door. That she was pretty skeptical from this guy from away. And I waited for now, it was more than I had a look from so. And, uh, you know, and uh, uh, I love Barton here very dearly. I think she, she would, uh, she just threatened that if I didn't call her more often, I wouldn't go to speak at her funeral. And that's been my greatest satisfaction to show people that, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, that, uh, that it's, uh, it's, it's good to work for them. Um, and uh, and uh, I think she felt good about that transition, but I'm sure it was for some people in the cell that, uh, you know, uh, may not feel that way. That's, that's part of doing your job, I suppose. You can't say yes to everything. You know, so. well, when did you start in Stowe, Charles? 13 years ago. It was 13, yeah. okay. Yeah. It's about the time that we hired Dan here. Yeah, I would say, yeah, a little bit after getting came on. You know, yeah. I actually know like a lot of folks, I set out to do this for a living. Yeah. I went home from college and yeah. they said I could declare a major and I asked my dad and he said, Well, you ever thought about being a town manager? And I said, No, what's that? And uh you know, I went back to the city of Keene where I was going to college and I knocked on the town manager's door and I said, Yeah, I'd like to work for you and give it a try, it's what it's like and I wrote the signing ordinance for him and you know, 32 years later, here I am, I'm more down meeting, talking about town manager for the government. So you never know. Right. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming here tonight um, because we do, we do, you know, we don't really know what 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 to do. Um, I think right now we feel like uh, we're doing a good job. You know, yeah. this, this form of government, we've got. We've got some really experienced people. You know, Gary's been on the GRB for what, almost 30 years. He's got a lot of experience in the town. Uh, Brian, pushing 20 years on the select board. I'm 13, going on 14. Eric knows everybody in town. You know, we've got such a diverse board. You know, Judy adds a lot, too, to our board. Yeah. 
And, um, you know, before we had Dan, it wasn't always like that. You know, we know, we know what it was like with Tag and with uh, Crawford. And you're right. We're very fortunate to have found Dan. In fact, I, I, I try to take credit for that because uh, I got, I did some checking when we were hiring Dan and uh, I talked to a guy named Pete Chevalier in, in uh, St. Albans. And he said, if you don't hire Dan, you're foolish. Right. You know, he was a city councilman up there and, um, and he was right. And we, uh, we did the right thing. And, you know, I, and I also know a little bit about you. I know, um, you know, I served Stowe police when you first got started there. Right. And, and, um, and I know the, you know, the, the changes that happened when you became town manager down there. And, um, you know, I remember the, I remember Ken Captain going, blah, 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 blah. he wasn't too happy about it, you know, but, um, it worked out really well, you know, and I know you're highly respected. I, I know a lot of the, the, the select board members down there and a lot of the different groups down there and they all respect you highly. Um, it's great to have your perspective on things. Um, I'm more hesitant because I think what we have works really well. And, and we won't always have this full board, but you know, this type of governing is nice. And I, I, do, I do believe that we lose control by, by having an, potentially use control by having a town manager versus town administrator. Because what Eric said, when you hear about a town manager, it's usually bad and they've done something they shouldn't do. And, um, you know, and so that, that makes us more hesitant to go down that road. You know, because it is a, a, a change of government, and we would have to have it voted by the taxpayers. And my opinion is, you know, we open up a search for a town administrator, and we look for him for a while. If we can't find one, maybe we we think about going to town manager, because you know we probably can find a town manager. You know, because like you say, it's a person that is going for that kind of job is usually, you know, that's what they do. A town administrator, that's not always true. You know, they usually won't start as a town administrator for a town like Northtown, you know, but, um, you know, I still think that, that what we have is great. I think what we have with Dan is great. And uh, he doesn't know yet if we're going to trick him into a few more years. You know, yeah, you know. Anytime, you know, next year, you know, after he retires, but we'd love to be able to pick up the phone and call you too. Yeah, I mean, certainly the administrator, or if I can be an assistant, you know, I like, I love Blue County, and uh, if I can help you, let me know. You know, I, you know, I just came out to, you can end up with a bad municipal manager, a bad town administrator, and, you know, I'm not saying that the world's perfect, you know, you know, you pick the thing to hire and fire them. Um, you know, more staff's closer to Elmore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think people have done it. Go ahead, Dan. You had something. I just want to say, you know, from my perspective, the town has stopped me for a long time. It's never been the fact that we've got to have a good visit for you to stop. I just want you to know that. I've never felt that way at all. Um, I, I will tell you once again, though, I think. I, I learned this job from school hard knocks. You know, I, I had to kind of feel my way with what I was doing. And even when I came here, yeah, I've been doing for six years, but still a lot to learn. Um, and, you know, the staff here has always been great to help me learn those things. And uh, it was like, good that from here, coming from St. Albany, which is a different environment. Um, and, you know, it was great to come into a environment where we really concentrated on doing things right. Which helped me because you know, I, I learned a good way to do things. 
one thing that, that Charles brings you know, how long have you been doing this, Charles? 32 years. 32 years. So somebody that starts in that as a municipal manager and works their career through it, they're going to have that school of hard knocks to go back through to the service. But and I do think, yeah, whatever you decide what you get, um, it will bring a different pool back to make the business town manager to go. Um, and if you don't want to do that, second thoughts, you know, I know Johnson did that they made their um, job description for a while with Duncan as a municipal manager. Yes, that's right. It wasn't a statutory thing. Yeah. Um, and maybe even taking a look at the side not for it. Looking at the, the, the job description, personnel policies, and, and tweaking them a little bit to, to make it a little bit more attractive. Yeah. So there's some things like that you consider. But, but once again, um, you know, I still feel like if I had brought this to you and this was I to consider, you know, I wouldn't have trained myself. I've learned a lot from people like Cheryl. You know, I've been able to pick up the phone call. If anybody you hire here, I will tell you too, we'll be able to pick up the phone. There's a good network of town managers and administrators throughout the state of Vermont, and you can put out an email, find something out from one of them at any point in time. They've always been willing to help anywhere. So, Great. something to think about. But, you know, it's not nice believe that it will just get you a different tool back. Right. <clears throat> well, one thing I think is Van School, because he's done a wonderful job. And, you know, the ones we've gone through in the past, when Dan stepped in here, and to me, administrator, that you give the power that we allow him to do, I mean, do an awful lot, maybe not quite as much as the manager, because he, but it works well. And being in the other community, like Charles, who's helped him and still will help us, you know, we have a nice community here, and we also have some pretty good employees that have, you know, work with it. So I just I would like to keep an open mind. But I do think I have heard some stuff about managers versus administrators, but just the opposite too. So but right now I'm all happy with making dance day. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make Richard make dance day. <laughs> then we'll make Richard's day. Then we'll make Dan make Richard's day. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make Garth make what you're saying. How about you, Gary? Any comment? Well, I'm pretty new to the select board business. Uh, like Bob mentioned earlier, I've been on the development review board for two years, uh, 30 plus, and but and I've also been a representative and in Mount Bayer and. I understand. I I try to keep an open mind on everything, and I certainly wouldn't be opposed to getting more information on both sides. And uh, and like somebody said earlier, we can advertise for an administrator, and if we don't get anybody. The pool's not there. <laughs> if the pool's not there, uh, I I liken it to the the development review board, the planning area. Um, we never had, until Todd came on board, we never had somebody that was ever trained to do that. And Tech trying to put the pieces together and put the pieces together. And it, it was pretty tough, and I know it had to be tough on Dan to try to go from being a general in the Air Force to... <laughs> but uh, no, I know it, it's difficult to you know to to step in and try to learn as you go, and especially when you're under fire all the time. And you guys both know that you should be getting paid by the fire department most of the time, probably because you're putting out fires all the time. But um, no, I I'm uh, I'm interested in hearing both. Uh, pros and cons of both types of government. And, uh, I know one that I don't want, so they are all type of government. But, uh, no, I do learn this. And, I, and it, it was great that you came, Charles, to, to enlighten us on, you know, on the man, on the town uh, manager type of government. You want to ask her? You want to know, Kevin? 
follow up question during the game. This is just about awkward to decide this for a further and come on that actually why they decide to make the transition like you think they just did you know and uh, they might well be giving that perspective from an elected official's perspective. But uh, you know where I'm at they have my home so uh, it's not a I can get an assistance. Uh, I don't know if there's any more I can answer. I I think uh, you kind of have to know for Dan, you know, it's like the last cow, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so, you know, but, you know, you'll have to weigh it through over time and uh, decide when and if it's ever the right year at the end. So you, said, you said Paco, but what about Heidi? Heidi, uh, Heidi, was on the board. Heidi was the chair when I was hired. And you said Norm Williams? Norm Williams, I think he came on afterwards, but Norm. And Norm was, uh, you know, was down on the school board and now he's on the select board and was a school teacher for a lot of years. And he's been around the block. He worked with me. Um, Willie, talk to Willie. Yeah, you know, he's right. around the block. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's on the board now. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they're all good folks. They all, uh, you know, bring different perspectives, but they work well together in a small, you know. <clears throat> yeah. One more thing I'll add too. I, I Charles and the other thing that I, I truly believe I don't think anybody can make a difference. This has gotten to be a lot more complicated. The things that come from the legislation now, you know, the municipal payments, the stormwater rules, the construction rules, and getting things done, it, it's probably three times as more complicated than what people when I started this 19 years ago. So it, it is a lot more complicated. There's, there's just so many different things in the area. It is a lot more difficult. In, um, it, it, it's just a lot more to understand in, in, in this job. Like I said, I'm not sure if you learn this from the third option. But, well, you know, that's a good perspective. I mean, yeah. Dan has a, you know, I guess you wouldn't see these, but I mean, yeah. you know, out here, you know, <laughs> but I would say, uh, and more is coming. Well, I would even say that when I first started as the manager, I started in hard work. Um, Long time ago, and uh, geez, you know, there's little around the school when you're learning in the field, right? And you try to smell the tree and, and you grow, and uh, you see what you need to do. Uh, but I would say that I used to feel like I could buy a large handful of scope of what was confined in the environment. And more and more, I stopped building my factory cleaning because, um, and going and working through others and with others. Uh, because the complexity is truly really mind boggling when it's coming at us now. There's stormwater, there's uh, uh, police reform, and <clears throat> expectation, and uh, it's uh, land use regulation. Uh, we've seen it at the ERP. There's a lot there. These are multi million dollar corporations, and uh, you know, you really need to, to hire a police chief that you need some of those police professionals to hire, a, you know, a, a zoning administrator that's got that background, right? Uh, I remember uh, when we had someone who wanted to talk to the recreation director and the cover letter said, I like to have fun. Well, me too. But I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go apply to be the recreation director, right? I, I don't have that background. You know, I have some of it, you know, so I was mostly working with those folks. But I never pretended that I was have a badge or, you know, could do a structural loading uh, analysis, you know, and, uh, you know, I've uh, been pretty good at bring those people in and, and uh, you know, developing, uh, you know, uh, good policy governance for the board, you know, uh, we don't have to think about the same things over and over, we talk by it, we need to change it, let's talk about changing it, but, you know, let's, uh, let's get it out because there's a lot of stuff to get about nowadays and, uh, and it doesn't seem to be getting any easier as, as time goes on. And so I do agree with that assessment that it's going to, and it, and it's going to get there. And, you know, I, I'm obviously, uh, you know, uh, feel that, uh, you know, the other thing I, I will say is that uh, I believe in professional management in the public sector. And one of the, the strengths of the council manager form of government is John Ryan. The mayor is supposed to be, uh, I need to serve whoever that board is. And however, this community may evolve and change over time. And so I'm actually not allowed to run for elective office. I'm not allowed to be a member of a political party. And so a lot of people don't really appreciate that, that, that my job is to be made political and to focus on uh, 
ensuring that elected body has a context building techniques to make it inform the decision. So they understand what the law says, they understand, you know, why they um, put in their trust these answers. And so that uh, when we come to a meeting, we just hit the ground running and, uh, you know, be prepared to make decisions. It's ultimately that legislative body of the council and the form of government is the decision. If that, if that helps you. Thanks. Judy, do you have any comments? I just, I have been listening to Dan and Ford and was reading between the lines with him because he's been putting this in our lap mm -hmm. over and over again. And I, I, I have a little more experience on the board than Gary, but Gary's been around a lot longer than I have. And I'm not afraid of looking at a manager's position. And I think what Charles is saying too is very pertinent that we all aren't going to be here forever. And uh, people who I hear the offices, we have great, great staff, but who knows when that turnover would happen. So we need someone who's confident and knows what they're doing. And with all the information coming down from the from Montpelier, all the changes that are happening, someone who's really good at managing all that. So that's, I'm not afraid of going in that direction. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you coming out. All right, we'll move into number two, Morristown Conservation Commission, Velcro project. Brent, or? Thank you. Uh, we're not our last conservation meeting, so we'll just discuss uh, what we helping out so Manchester reach their goal of 10,000. They, uh, that was basically a donation program that they were looking at. And that 10,000 was to go towards the uh, East Month Veterans. The state putting in the, the majority of the money. So uh, <clears throat> we talked about thousand at first, but we're down to, we'd like to spend $500 to the Soil Land Trust. So, um, a partner with them in conservation. In the Lamar County. And uh, you got anything to add, Grant? Right? No, I think this is one of the bigger conservation efforts that we'll see in the town of Marshtown for quite a while. So it's the expensive easement that's coming up, and I think we should be part of it. I think the town should be part of uh, that. I think the, uh, the value of Valcor property as you drive to it just stands out. And to have it in a farm and know it's going to be in a farm is something very valuable to me rather than to see another housing development under agricultural land. But I think that's one of the main reasons. $500 is to me. I mean, I don't want to contribute to that myself because I believe in it. But I think the town should be part of this effort. How soon is that going to happen? How soon do you? It, it's moving. Slowly, yeah. uh, and uh, a lot of it depends on the amount of money that came in the budget for Housing Conservation Committee. And I haven't heard what that amount is. I know the budget's passed, and, and mm -hmm. I haven't heard that project yet. I hadn't uh, been in contact with Stolen Land Trust, and their part of it is coming along good. Right. Stolen Land Trust is a great organization, and they're able to raise the money pretty, pretty well. But the big part of it and it will come from, from the state. I think that's coming. How soon? I don't know. I don't know, but it, 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 if the budget passes and the money is there, it'll move right along. Mm -hmm. If the budget passes and the money isn't there, it will be slower. But it will happen. Okay. I think we should be part of it. Yep. Are you guys looking for a motion? Is that what you want? Yes. 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 We have to. We have to have approval. What? Spending any money that we have. Right. That's cool. <laughs> You guys want to do a motion? So this is, I, I'm not fair as to where the money is. So you're buying the easements for the developer property, the still land trust is looking to conserve the developer property, is that what it is, and they're having to purchase the easement? The, the, the amount of easement is over $600,000. So and you all know that anyway. But the still land trust is raising part of that, $10,000, to add to, to that, just to make it all happen. So what we're trying to do is make it happen. We aren't going to contribute to the state budget, but we can work 
could still land trust and be part of it. You know. Just speaking with like going outside of the town, you know, on front of my dad, I have a conservation commission come to the site for the town. In the town, you know, it's different than the new community. So it's outside of But even though the, the property is in Morristown. Morristown. The property is in Morristown. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So in Morristown, but another organization outside of town is. Well, you know, yeah. it's essentially two organizations, Stroll Land Trust and the Public Conservation Board. Together. What do you think? So this is a match of some percentage or no. I don't know how to answer that here. I don't think it's a match. I think it's a, it's an agreement. Uh they'll come up with five hundred and fifty thousand from answers, right? And they'll come up with ten thousand to make that six hundred thousand. So we're, we're adding this for peanuts to it, right? The 500. We're to, adding just a little bit. Like 500. A little bit of salt to the gravy, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A year ago, we helped out the land trust on the Brownsville project. We went forward, and that was a massive amount of acreage that is well preserved to be conserved. But this is our best area. Right. And we don't have much back here. Okay. Do you want to do a motion or what? I make a motion that the um, Morristown Conservation Commission donate for you. Which will it be? Five hundred dollars to the Stowe Land Trust to help um, secure the Bellsworth project. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? <clears throat> All in favor say aye. All right. Any opposed? Don't just pass. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I you think for improving the road up to the Morristown portion of the Brian Farm. Uh, good. It's a year from now. But it's yeah. good. I'm doing up there. Uh, good. Good. Thanks for coming in. Thank, Thank you. you. Wrong. Well, wrong. Well, while we got the two guys, just a quick question. Uh, did they get, um, did the Conservation Commission get to look at the Tim Sullivan proposal? We have, and that's on my agenda for our meeting on October 21. Okay. Uh, we've somewhat discussed some off the record, but that's on my agenda. Okay. Uh, October 21. All right. Now, uh, he's also offering, uh, 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 to rent or lease tax on the town forest land. If right. That'll help or, but. Makes any difference in the decision? And We're going to, when we come to an opinion, we will write a letter to the select board on okay. what our thoughts are. Yeah. No, that's fine. Yeah. I just wanted to see if you. Yeah. Have you tied it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's nothing new other than your letter to Mr. Sullivan. No. No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, discuss Halloween. In, in past years, actually, very successfully, we've closed down some streets to kind of encourage Halloween to concentrate in certain areas. We're kind of recommending against that this year. I mean, we're, I don't think we're recommending that we stop people from having Halloween or going trick or treating. We just don't know if it's right that we're asking people to go out and congregate in high areas. Plus, we're asking those residents of those areas to open up their doors and we're kind of not, you know, I guess our, our thoughts are, we're not sure if that's the right thing to do this year. So we want to come to the board, discuss that with you, and get your thoughts to, you know, about that part of the So not recommending um, stopping Halloween, just we're recommending not closing down sections of Correct. And if people want to do the tradition, you want to treat it, how you worry, turn on the court play. You know, if you want to know your team was there to do it. It's still going to be an interest, of course. Would we put something in the paper? I hope, yeah. and we're not going to close the streets now. Just because they're aware they're on their own. <laughs> We've been getting a lot of phone calls at the office. So since I started, because I was lived in the village and I knew what it was like, I started the Halloween candy drive. So we've been getting a lot of phone calls. Um, 
um, that I typically run the Boy Scouts used to help me and now the A students for the past few years. I I can't handle cross probably can't be back with the amount of work to the election right now. Um, I can't handle being treasurer actually, right? Not <laughs> with the amount of work with the electric. So um, it's not it's not happening unless somebody else does it, but it doesn't seem like the right time to be doing that either. Bell Parker has called me last week to kind of discuss they were feeling out what we were doing in Waterbury. They didn't want to be the only one that closed down their streets and then everybody go there. And they were feeling that they were going to um, not close down streets and not cancel, but not encourage either. Yeah. Do you have any more comment, Richard? About it? Well, I was in, yeah, you know, I don't feel comfortable encouraging people to close the streets like that. You know, just to not close the streets where that's what it was. I don't know how much the situation will be anyway. So, you know, at this point, this year is the easier to get. What did you say, Judy? Sorry. I'm not, I think not closing the streets down is fine. I'm curious about safety because people aren't used to kids just scattering around town. No, uh, we're used to that. I mean, we do that. Just about uh, crossing the, I'm just thinking about crossing the street. I mean, yeah, you know, you know, no, no different than the other night. Yeah, so different. Because they back when I was running around town. Yeah. I, I don't think we do it very heavily. Okay. Just anyway, so. Yeah, we don't have to I'm just more concerned about kids. Kids crossing the street and yeah, you know, nothing yeah, visible. Always, always that. Okay. What do you guys think? Any, any comments? Yeah, I, I don't think it's on the whole street issue. I, I, I agree with that. I don't think it's too long of a conversation. As we've seen in the past, and I think the in general have a better sense of COVID and the risk involved and uh, than the other American by and large. And, uh, I think they're taken seriously and they will continue to do so. I just don't think they're going to predict it that to that throng of children all in one area. It's all being spit and over all the place. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if you need to shut the street down. Okay, we don't need the motion right there. No, I think this is long as the advertise um, in the paper and yeah. the um, front porch forum, you know, due to the COVID. Yeah. You know. yeah. Put the blame on COVID. And, yeah. mm -hmm. right. Of course, you've got a lot of heat for not doing Fourth of July. You know, we still catch it on social media and still see the post. You know, why we couldn't have fireworks on Fourth of July. This may be seminar, but whatever. Yeah. But should because we're going we're not stopping Halloween. We're just not closing our own. Right. Yeah, I may dress up. Not for long. You know, maybe I'll dress up and walk around right town. We already got one of the right here. See, it's got to dress up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Please. Parks and Rec talked at the last meeting of Emily I think it's next week, about seeing if we could come up with an alternative or a Zoom Halloween house. I don't know. We were going to kind of see if there was something that we could do as an alternative. Okay. All right. We'll move on to number four discuss Jersey Heights three acre stormwater permit. This was a big thing. Um, they're very, very difficult when you're going to storm um, South Rolling. 
Hamilton, probably 10 years ago, um, actually went to a stormwater district where they actually raised tax money to go through these subdivisions and retrofit the subdivisions to meet the new regulations. Um, I did ask the opportunity to state the identity of the state and kind of put this one up on their priority list for a three acre for, for financial assistance because it does um, involve homeowners. The homeowners don't understand it. Um, they think, you know, it, it just is very, very complicated that, that they may have to pay an additional fee now for something that they, that they own. Um, and one of the questions I've asked, I have not got an answer on yet uh, because if they don't have a good stormwater permit and some of this stuff expires, it can cause their, their, um, their, their property. It can be a, a cloud on their title and they, they can have complications selling the property. And if some property owners have actually had to put money into an escrow account to pay for retrofits. Once again, this is one of those things that gets more and more complicated all the time. We are going to have to apply for coverage. I, you know, now, um, we can hire public pilot to do that for us and, and get started on it. But at some point in time, the state can come out and inspect this subdivision and make us do things to upgrade the stormwater system out there we need to do regulation. Is that because they take the measurements of all the roofs yeah, and all the yeah. sidewalks? So it's not like a plot. I thought it was just going to be a three acre plot. No. So it's not. No. All the rain gutters, all the roofs, all that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Driveway. Um, Driveway. Anything is an impervious surface. And you got to remember, you know, it changes. So you know, what's the first thing somebody does when they buy a house? They put that one. Or else maybe they've done an addition. You know, and it, it really, because, you know, they, that is considered an imperfect surface. A deck is? Yes. Even if the water can go through the floor flat? No. Okay. Oh, good. Right. Imperfect. And that would have, of course, you know, in this particular case, it's going to be more difficult. So let's say, let's say it can use um, a part of an upgrade, it needs an extension box where you're going to put it. Because there's no. I don't think there's any common land out there. Like yeah, there, there is common in the middle there. Yeah. Um, but you know, will it work for stormwater? Yeah, pretty much all edge. <laughs> yeah, we'll right. do that. You know, but the soil conditions. You know, we're lucky. Some of the soil conditions here are sand, but in some places it's clay, play, and you can't do anything to um, you know, regulate the ground. Besides Jersey Heights, I mean, I was thinking like campers and those places, right? They're all. I don't think campers that I see. Right, Trevor, is from what our attention there. Well, so they're not sort of one of the three acres, but like, um, now it's probably the, the plaza. Yeah, the plaza is all. It's, it's, it's all that's you've got to be retrofit. Um, or at least ask for, you know, for, for them to look at that too. That's got to be retrofit when they think stormwater systems that meet these new rules. What about the town itself? The town itself, you know, because it's considered a school, it's just one. Right. They, they are over the three acres of impervious property. They're going to have to do stormwater treatment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. 
So there's no action we need. There's no action, but you know, I want to bring you guys up to speed. You know, we're going to have to collect with coverage. You know, you know, I December, December one. Yeah, we're going to collect with permit coverage. But just so you understand what's going on out there in Mountain too, is it, 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 it will get more and more complicated. And the rules, stormwater rules, especially, will get more and more complicated. We just need to understand what's coming out. We just took a ride around MSI over there and see what it costs them. But mm -hmm. And what I'm curious is coming about the FTC that the town's liability in that deal warrants us creating a fund at least uh, begin to put some money into them at a low level. Right. Well, this particular one is open the state will agree with me. Um, that so the rest of all some that there's money out there. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but there's money out there right now to help with some of these retrofits. It's, it's a public private partnership. I'm hoping that they put things like this where the homeowners association not to or say power, you know, but homeowners especially, because you're, you're going to somebody that doesn't understand it, you know, like I paid my taxes, I believe my tenancy meeting, not fun. Um, then why do I have to do this and the, the neighbor down the street doesn't have to do it because they're 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 not mindful of this. So it's it's gonna be really, really fun meeting to then on. Um so it's just it's very, very common for homeowners to understand. And the other part of that too is if they're not covered under permit and the state decides they want to start clouding vitals, then it becomes a whole different issue. So it's just pretty important. You don't see other uh, development or, or places where people are living that's going to be affected by this right now. Right now. No. In fact, that they got the list out of all the housing okay. that cover. This is the one subdivision, and we're, we're part of it because it's the town really. This town has a way on the route that in Bermuda Circus. Um, and we take the stormwater permit every year. That's good. It's got a stormwater system throughout. I mean, it's probably just a matter of a retention basin at some point, but it all dumps into the ravine down there. But there will be an expense to it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So it's not going to be three, you know, once again. There's a, there's a homeowner share here that's going to be very, very complicated to do. There's also, I went to a meeting on it not too long ago, but there's also, like, if, if you, uh, I don't know if Howard could do it, but like Ken Harvey's over there, I think he got a letter on the three acre limits. Now, if he can turn some of that area back into, Grassland or oh, field or you know, something like that. He can get down to probably less than the three acres, but he can also it also generates a credit if you if you turn some of this impervious area back into pervious area, you get a credit for that as well. Can you do that by having a grass roof? Uh, well, might. Yeah. How do you do that? We did have a number of people um, when we were permitting the industrial park and all over the town. Um, there was uh, an environmental group that suggested that all these industrial facilities had grass roofs, grass roofs, which is exactly that reason. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, not know whether they were considered first or not, but it, it is a design. I don't know how well it works in the modern but Right. They're all over Europe. I see them everywhere you go. All right. Oh, yeah, just so you understand, it, once again, you know, I'm not going to. Uh, I think the big thing in the future is stormwater rules are going to get tighter. So it's three acres now. You can anticipate yeah. there's another five years. Yeah, I think one acre. Rock and then we'll have to do, do more and more retrofits um, to stormwater systems. Yeah, they do like a half an acre. It's what yeah. really like. Yeah, they really like it down there. Yeah. Okay. Next, discuss and approve town clerk software purchase for the cemetery map update. Sarah. So, I've been looking at cemetery programs for a long time now. Um, and I think that the cemetery program is going to be a lot better than what we had previously. And I think that the cemetery program is going to be a lot better than what we had previously. And I think that the cemetery program is going to be a lot better than what we had previously. Uh, since they were cloud-based, we're finding that now that our 
our server is cloud based, when our software is not cloud based, it's just old technology and they don't always talk well, it becomes complicated. And um, the mapping, like the mapping is very uh, essential to me. Um, and uh, that there's a public search portal. Once we, we get everything up to date, that there's a link on the website and people can just go and find their genealogy information and see that. So those were the basic criteria that um, I was looking for. As you'll see from these quotes, they are all over the place. Some of the prices seem a lot cheaper, but that is because they don't include half of the um, things that we were looking for. So they're all add-ons. Um, some of the people wouldn't even give me quotes until we had up-to-date survey maps that they wanted me to hire a surveyor, and then they would give me quotes for the program. Um, so I am recommending going with them site, even though it's not the lowest bid, because they have everything that we were looking for. Um, and they have seen the maps that Lori and Francis created that are um, maybe not the most up to date, um, but I sent them those and I sent them original maps. And they can take those maps, overlay them to so Google um, Maps. Uh, on top, they've already um, taken some samples and their head programmer says that they will, they're good enough, they'll work. Um, and that we would most likely not have to get a professional master on top of it. And I have restoration funds uh, for every document that we record, $4 go get set aside. So I would recommend getting a software program that we pay for out of the restoration fund and then that annual maintenance yearly would then roll over into the regular general budget. Okay. So what's what's the difference between uh, the cemetery find and the some sites? Uh, the cemetery find uh, some sites will load all of our maps in their quote. The cemetery find um, would only include its pleasant view and one other, and then in order to do each other, um, it would be like seven thousand dollars to do two more cemeteries, so it would be another twenty one thousand dollars to link and load all of the maps to their program, and he couldn't guarantee that the maps we have were exactly what compatible or not. It's like so much less per year for the first year. They would they would definitely be my second choice from the people that I talked to. Um cemetery fine, they started out um as a they're like a data management. They're really their focus is they want to come in and just scan all your records. That's what they that's what they um are to to scan the records versus uh their soft, it is the, the software system looks good, it was just a little simpler. That, um, they're more into data management than they were like in just cemeteries. Does that make sense? I don't know how to explain it. So once we get into this, the state software system, the contractor, and we get everything loaded annually or, or monthly or however, will they continue to do the updates throughout the year? as the uh, information is sent to them from whoever we have here working that piece of it? Um, maybe by updates to the map or for those? Yeah, I mean, as, as we put more people around. Uh, we would do that. So that, that's what the, pro the program, so it's uh, expensive to start up and link and load and all the maps, but once it was in there, if we find a cell D, we actually, instead of using a Word document now that we type up the, uh, you can do it right through the program, print it out, it creates a lot, and then somebody um, is buried, we go into the computer and we can update that information. So going forward, once it's set up, my office would do all that. And if we do the public search, it automatically. Okay, I think that's what we don't all of it. So, you know, we've talked about this lot, so you know, this is the kind of first step in the program that Sarah's talking about, and whether or not this 
for right now here and update it but it is the future. The next step is we want to put a contract out to hire somebody to help there get all that data and transfer it really data transfer kind of thing. You know, into that get it managed and get it as best as we can. Like I say that because there's gonna be some things out there that we're just never gonna know that these kind of areas and you know, there's, there's more than one case I mean there's, you know we, we know that there's spots there we don't have exactly where they are we don't know who's there and then we're gonna know what we don't know we're also gonna know what we know and it's gonna be a good record to move forward on. Um, and I think once we get that done then the second thing is you know is figuring out the section piece of it that we've all talked about and getting somebody that you know, getting that information Back to Sarah in a timely fashion so that all the stuff goes into this program. But Sarah's record is only going to do it the information that's in the chat to it. So this is kind of you know, the first step in this. The next step, let's get everything transferred over and then let's you know, figure out the steps in and how we're going to take that um, for the future. And, and there's just, it's, it's kind of a thing that, you know, we, we had some problems in the past, but I think this is the way forward on this. I think this is the first step. Do we have any history on this company at some point? How long have you been in business? Other secretary to provide the software for? Um, the only other one in Vermont is the Rutland Jewish Cemetery. And we would own the data, correct? With some sites decides to retire, we own the data. Yes. Right. They can't hold it hostage. Uh, 2012. They were the first cloud-based cemetery program in the world, and and they're now the largest. Uh, program okay. Thank you. What do you guys think? Uh, I make motion that we approve the purchase of the stem site software. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. So any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thanks, Sarah. Be continued. All right, next, uh, approve Stafford Avenue sewer line transfer. I brought this to you guys. Um, well, first off, we thought this was that a lot of time ago. Um, staff that sewer line. I think we told this to staff who was 10. 10, I think. Like that. We thought the building took care of a long time ago. Um, but exactly, it never was transferred to the They said the paperwork to us in the spring pot about transferring it to them. Um, and so that paperwork's wrong because they had actually been wanted to eat on the tower. And that's why I think that we can't give you the easement on the road. We can't allow you just to go on the road and take the road away from it. They were fine and they put it in the same track. And they, they can go work on the two lines at any point in time. So all those things can be fixed. Um, like I think um, the challenge again for the ownership of the village. Like the, the town is not in the school business, but it is, and they need to be able to maintain it. I'll make a motion we head it over so second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh it has to be posted in paper because it's a transfer of your property. Okay. So, so the agency that you're able to say we're also posted in the paper. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion is passed. Next, discuss and approve road name change for Feline Loop. I would like to thank you, Jill Mudge, for giving the reason for the change. Yeah. Yeah. She's pretty thorough. What about road name? It's Feline, it used to be 80 Street. Oh, not 80. 80 Street. But, um, feline, it's called feline movement, but it's feline, it's the, I guess, the historical name of it. Yeah. Does anybody know how that came to be? 
I, I, is that you, Jill? Well, this is Jill, but I can see that Francis is also muted and in this meeting, and so he would be the best person to um, answer that question, I think. Francis, if you're still there. I'm still here. Hi, Francis. Hi, Jill. Hi, Francis. Uh, hello, folks. Yeah. Can you enlighten us, Francis? In in 1869, they developed the road down through there. There was a there was a creamery that used to be down there, where the building, the red building, is right now on the left on the right hand side as you go down the hill. That used to be a big creamery. Now all the cats in the village used to go down and try to get the cream from the milk cans that were down there. So they called it Feline Avenue. It's better than Pussy Loop. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, it is. <laughs> so judging from the, and when we, if you look up in the town records, uh, Todd's got a copy of it. And it's there, the, actually it was called Feline Avenue back in 1869. And there's a actual picture and a drawing of the road and the et cetera. And uh, that would that would fit right in good with the green line that you've got all through the village anyway. You might as well have one more and uh, and add sure. to the loop because uh, that would it would generate I think a, a generate a little uh, a little talk about town about why they called it that and it'd be anything that you can encourage people to discuss things like that is better than what they've been discussing lately anyway so that's the way i look at things that's true francis thank you for the explanation but all right there's actually it's actually classified that to start with then they changed it to a and b loop because they never called it Feline Avenue anyway, but that's what it was actually called. And uh, we've I've got records of it and the town has too. If you need it, I can pull them and Todd can give them to you. Great, thank you. Good to hear from you, Jill. You too, Francis, take care. Do the same. Do I hear a motion? So moved. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thanks, Jill. Thank you. Next, discuss and approve update to junk ordinance. Todd, are you there? I'm here. Hey, welcome. Thanks. Can you tell us about this junk ordinance? Junk yeah, ordinance? Um, I've only, so, uh, I've only written one, well, two for the same property, two junk ordinance tickets the entire decade plus I've been here uh, right. for one I think for I the know same both property. Of yes, uh, I did them with Officer Reeves at the time. Uh, our yeah. ordinance right now doesn't have a waiver amount set, which is problematic. So um, I would like, there's a new model. This basically what you have in front of you, you get a couple of decisions to make on a new model of the LCT ordinance. Um, yep. Our ordinance needs to be updated because that's in the waiver amount. It's really that simple. Okay. And all, all you have in front of you is the VLCT ordinance uh, change to Morristown, sort of name your town, wherever, and the same exact things in the existing ordinance. Just a couple yeah. decisions. I think your copy's in yellow that you need to make. But other than that, really, I just need a waiver amount because I legally can't write a ticket for a waived amount for a jump violation. I thought I was going to have to write one for Union Street. Uh, but um, that problem project has taken problem has taken care of itself for the last couple of weeks, so it's not as pressing as I thought it was going to be. Tom, is there a question uh, with these updates? They don't seem to be drastic and change, but with the updates, if we approve it, will that bring anybody uh, into a position where they'd be in violation automatically? No, honestly, the only two junk ordinances things I had ongoing right now were one on Union Street and one on Winter Street. 
and they've both uh, responded to advisory letters. Uh, I mean, asking them, asking them for com- for voluntary compliance to fix any issues, and both parties have worked with me. So no, this isn't looking to like I, I don't do gotcha. This isn't looking to get anyone in the ordinance that's outside it now. All this does is update our ordinance, the new VLCT ordinance. Doesn't change anything in our ordinance. Still, one junk car per property is allowed. Um, it just really gives me the the new ordinance that's the model ordinance and it gives me a set waiver amount which i didn't have thank you again i've only written two tickets in my entire 10 years that's a good thing agreed Thanks yeah you never want a result of having having to find a citizen or really i mean a resident because that's the last that's the, the complete last step you want to get to right you want to work with people you had a question? It's not. It applies also not only to the village, but to the town, right? Correct. This is the town ordinance, yes. Okay. Okay. You guys want to make a motion on this? Make a motion to approve the updates to the dump ordinance. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thanks, Todd. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Next, uh, discuss Morristown Development Fund Economic Relief Grant. Well, this is actually the concerns are a bit under just because it's both of them. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
our ad board is that they would go out and talk to some of these organizations, uh, local businesses, put it up there to cover. No, it's not too long. Okay. I don't think you Jerry, is this something Rotary pick up and move the word out on the ground as well? Mm. Oh, I'm not looking to raise money from the Rotary, but yeah, as far as educational and informational, we get that to the business community. It was possible, but I'm I'm kind of questioning. I mean, it's a goodwill thing, but is 2,500 um, enough to help a business to survive? For some, we we as you guys know, I'm on the MDF board as well. And like Trisha said, we've had a couple meetings, talk at length about it. Some businesses know, but um, there's a lot of businesses that that would help, and that's why we actually call it the relief. It's not. We initially said recovery, meaning, you know, a bigger mm -hmm. thing, but relief, get some relief, you know. Go ahead, Tricia. Jerry, what they did in the hospital was $2,000. Yeah, $2,000. We looked at it, they spent almost $50,000 on the hospital. Yeah. Uh, and they spent almost Um, we don't have any loans out right now, um, and we are making interest on our money. It goes up and down, but that that initial fund was, I think, around two hundred thousand when we started, and it was up around six hundred. You know, it's up and down, but you know, basically, on a given year, we're, we're that's just spending the interest on the money we're earning, and it might help a lot of people. You know, it could give some people some pretty good relief. I actually reached out and talked to some of these owners that. That to you, I know it doesn't sound like a lot, and to some of these businesses, it might not be, but but it is to, to a lot, you know. Um, especially when, I mean, I can yeah. tell you a couple of businesses, but if you're just a small, independent, independent home they're not their corporations, yeah. they're not a person, they're not a right shopper. They're the noise of the right hand, they're the front right next to my head, and the staff that's down there. Um, it's our little El Foro that, you know, works her family to death to try to keep the doors open. This is where I feel we're really working out there. Right. Well, there's like pick up and delivery, who uh, that's a small morsel business. And I, I actually was driving for them for free because uh, he didn't have he didn't have the money to do it. He, his business dropped right off. You know, he bought it from Sharon and Bill Rowell. And, and um, he had no business. And I'm, I've been friends with him forever. And I, I both my wife and I drove several runs for free because uh, – you know, he had no money. And when this thing happened, he just dropped right off. And, you know, we put it as a 50% loss. And like Tristan said, we talked about, you know, doing a balance sheet from last year to this year and a P&L and all that. And we decided just to not do it, just do $2,500 one time. And, and and then the other thing about it is if it's more than 20, if it's more than our $50,000 that we put aside, then we can take a look at it. Maybe I'll there's, yeah, maybe there's 26 businesses that need it. I mean, just they may not all ask, you know, either. So we just thought it was a really good use of that money because we're not using it right now. And especially right now, you know, this may not be something we do all the time, but, you know, these are desperate times for some people. And I think it did help a lot. Well, that's five years. It's been a uh, yeah, the mushroom company. It was like, yeah, two, three years ago. But yeah, you're right. There's so this is a not un untaxable money, right? They get it's a grant. So it's right. Like a it's a donation. It's a donation, right? Um, what do you guys think we can do about this? Because a lot of people don't understand the end that's not about it. We know it. Just we did. Right. Hey, you know, we've got this so far. I'm glad I brought up because you really look at the, the, the amount of time the town has had these loans, one of the few towns that still has it and it's managed it well over the course of the years. Started out with around two hundred thousand dollars in basic loans. You know, just like anything else. For the most part, a lot of these businesses have made good use of it, and most of them have always made good off the run. You're, you're gonna have that occasionally because it's a high risk loan. But if you look at something that grew from $200,000 to $1.5 It was $650 six fifty or six fifty. Yeah. Um, in that twenty-year period, so from interest and interest on loans that you make, it's been a big help for a lot of businesses around here. Yeah. Oh, 
Applications going to be out. You know, people can people can get them. Well, yeah, we don't know. We could have 46 applications, you know, and then we could, you know, pick 20 and then maybe do a second round or whatever. But um, you know, I, I'm I'm totally supportive of it. So this is a payback. No, no payback. It's a grant, not a loan. Go ahead, ma'am. I would think so. Right. They're going to have to, yeah, basically say um, loss of 50% revenue. The document we have here in front of us is in review, so it's a preliminary hold of view. It's what you've heard already about the dollar amount. I know we'll grant you some building that mortgage back, mortgage back, payroll utilities, total alterations, et cetera. Criteria for all businesses must be registered for business entity in good standing in the state of Vermont. Have an established business within the town of Morristown. Business established prior to 2019. Self certified loss of business revenue from April 1st to July 31st of 2020 of 50% or more related to COVID. Have no pre existing tax liens or legal judgments prior to March 2020 and are not currently filed in bankruptcy. Provided by the county year 2020. Those are criteria for eligible businesses. And then the following entities are not eligible investment real estate entities. Churches, nonprofit organizations, banks, and financial institutions, any business entity or individual that previously defaulted on a loan for more stuff than that. More stuff than that. Yeah. So that's the date from July, from March to July. April 1st. April 1st. Oh, April 1st, July. Yeah. A 50% loss in revenue during that, that time. So, what do you think? So, your motion? I make a motion to approve. The one time grant on 2500 for up to 20 businesses from the Lord's End Development Fund. Okay, I have a motion to have a second. second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion's passed. Thank you. Yes, thanks for that. Next, um, we'll do the uh, errors and omissions. That's there. Yeah. Yeah. Make the motion to approve the errors and omissions I have a motion and a second. Is there any further further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. Yeah. Next, update on the downtown designation application and town plan. Trisha, that's you.
guardian, speaking of things out there, we were with that, you know, back on the field. We can talk to that meeting, they will be out to get a committee together. It's all fine. I talked to Penny about the like water. You know, so it's, it's moving. I mean, I just want to never know that at any point anyone does have any questions. Just reach out to me. Okay. Thank you. That's great. Any questions for Tricia back? Thank you. Next, Board of Health. We have approved private family burial site. Elaine, welcome. I thought you just wanted to come to a meeting tonight. You want to talk to us about it? Uh, well, I have a property where I have uh, over under three acres. Yep. And uh, it's just myself and my daughter. And um, I was told that if you have over an acre, you're allowed to bury yourself with yourself, but to bury one of the properties. And um, I was told you don't have to be involved, and you don't, um, you just have to be a permit, and then, you know, you put it in the ground. And I thought that that was smart thing. You know, I, I don't want to be involved and I don't want to be cremated. So I thought that would be an easy way for my daughter. And um, the Hamilton, they're a great different church and off we go. <laughs> Do you have any comment on that, Dan? <laughs> Todd, are you still there? I'm here. Do you have any comment on this? Uh, no, it's select board approval. Um, I had to help uh, uh, Ms. Giacobini with her GPS coordinates. I did the best I could off Google Earth. I didn't go yeah. on her property. I did it based on her description. So knowing that the GPS is somewhat approximate, um, other than that, I don't, I don't really have any comments. We've never really done one while someone's still alive before. So it's a bit different, but it doesn't, there's no reason we can't do it. Proactive. I'm going to you what was the last thing you said about cancer? He's never done one. Never done one. Oh, no, no. Well, someone's been alive. He's never done Yeah. And I just said you're being proactive. <laughs> All right. So there's no reason to uh, not grant this, Todd? No reason not to grant it. The only other thing to note is that I had to change. The town has a little simple application for this. this we don't use it very often. I had to change it. The legislature changed the law about three years ago. Remember the green burials were talked about? Gary might even yeah. be on the legislature. So that, the, the application changed, like the depth of the casket went from, I think, five feet to three and a half feet. So other than that, there's no reason you guys can't approve it, in my opinion. Okay. So then we have to sign this form. Is that what we have to do? Do you do or sign it? Yeah, I'll try to stop the sign. All right, great. So do I hear a motion? I'm going to ask you one question. Does this mean that only one person can be buried there each time? Like if someone else wants to be buried here, they have to go and apply for that to be buried on that piece of land. Todd, do you know that? I believe you're just approving Miss Giacobini to be buried there tonight. We're not approving anyone else. We're not approving like a, a family. Uh, right, yeah, a family. Right. I, get the um, I just have one question that somebody brought up to my uh, mind. Uh, if someday she goes to sell the property and the person by the personal knows there's a body on the property, does it once once that body or can they treat it and what would they do with it? Uh, <laughs> I mean, she was like, who cares? I'm dead. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We did go through it. Levine, that's right. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We did go through it before. Oh, you did? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Well, it is. It's in trust for 
our game. Yeah. So what does that mean that for any future or even up beyond your daughter to get to that spot? And it's needed right away to get to that spot. So understand that what we're trying to do is protect you by giving you the information that if you don't, if your daughter sells the property and there's no easement, then they would have no way to absorb your body to come back. Oh, okay. They can't move you to. Okay, so you're saying to get the easement. Get one, yeah. Oh, so that's yeah, yeah, the easement. Yeah, that's right. I appreciate that. So, how do I get the easement? I'm trying to get the easement. I'm trying to get Well, I already have the truck, so would I tell him? Yeah, I'm in the bed. What do I say? For the easement? You should make sure that there's always an easement where you're being in the block. And then, how do they get recorded in the land records? Okay, so I have to call him to get back to him and then yeah. here. Most real estate attorneys can help you with that. Sure. Your trust attorney, if he doesn't have the answer, don't know who to call again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So do I hear a motion on this? Make a motion to approve it. In a second. Any further dis discussion? Yeah, that's Is that part of it? Yeah. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passed. All right, so I have to pay you my money. Right. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> you, you don't have to pay that, but that will get, no, that gets recorded in the land records, correct? Yeah, that's the I are you there, Todd? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
But you know, my idea is roads were made for transportation, not for trail. It's true, but well, let you know. Uh, all over the state, I mean, they're, they're even like in state highways, people are going up and down on a different path. It doesn't have to be more so. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but we'll, we welcome any input you have. Hey, yeah. I have a question for you. How do you like that box cover up there? How do you like the road? Well, after almost a year. But yeah, but how is it now? And but guess where they piled all the you're on the Guess where they put all the dirt and the equipment and everything? Hey Lee. You're supposed to say it's great. I have the new my land. Thank you. Hey Lee, say thank you. Well you guys should say thank, thank you, you too, because thank you, Lee. Thank you for thank you for dealing with it for a year. Thank you, Lee. It was fast tracked. I know you don't think it was, but it was it was important to us. Oh, well, what gets me is they were able to drive that eighteen wheeler over day after day after day with loads of gravel and rocks and everything. And the bridge was never came in, never did anything. But it won't now. That was the person liability now. Okay. Um, they did a great job. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Took a while. Percy did a great job. They did. They did. All right. Is there any other business? Yeah. I just want to let you know in case you're asked, all the absentee ballots were mailed out by the Secretary of State's office last week. Uh, about 3,700 were mailed out. Everybody um, should receive one. It's um, people don't receive one by October 7th, have the contact me. Uh, today, we officially can open the outside envelope and check in the certificate envelope. We um, have eight, 800 that we received in process today. Really? Which is more than, you know, um, usually we get about a thousand on a very good general election, so that was day one. We're pretty much almost there. About Thank you, Richard. 